the Monday after the 4th of July weekend is never fun, but I hope that we can make it a little bit better for you in this latest edition of Broncos Beat. Joining me here tonight, Cecil Lammy from 104.3 The Fan, Ryan Edwards from Broncos Country Tonight on KOA, and the one and only Andrew Mason from DNVR. Mace, it has been way too long. We are so glad that you can join us here tonight. It's good being back. It's good seeing uh, all three guys on here having their quarantine beards rocking and rolling right now. <laughs> it looks good. Always looking good, you guys. Well, the NFL, they sent their COVID-19 protocol to all 32 teams over the weekend, and there are still countless decisions left to be made before training camps get underway in just a few weeks. So I figured today we can take some time to discuss the possible impact of the coronavirus pandemic on the NFL. Although the NFL has stayed true to their off-season schedule with free agency, the draft, and OTAs, those were all things that they can do virtually. You cannot hold a virtual training camp. And with COVID cases rising, do you guys think that the league will be able to follow their track record and start camp on time? I think they can start camps on time. The question is, how long is it going to take? And are there going to be points where they have to pause camp because uh, there could be outbreaks with teams or outbreaks? in various regions. One thing the NFL has had is the luxury of being able to see how other sports leagues operate. So they've been able to see not just domestically with Major League Baseball starting in the last few days and the NBA and uh, Major League Soccer and NHL starting to gather teams, but also even over in Europe, seeing how the Premier League, the Bundesliga and others have handled this. And there's some best practices they can take from some things there are some lessons they can learn from others but the luxury the NFL has had is time and I think that's why they can get this thing started it's just a question of whether uh, the virus intercedes and uh, forces a pause I mean a little bit of this in my opinion has to do with buy-in from the players so yes we, we all picked that July 28th date that most teams are supposed to meet but what about the two weeks prior that at least uh, from my understanding the NFL is asking the players to quarantine during that period are the players going to buy in to that and then once they get into camp are they going to buy into the idea that they all need to take precautions when they leave the facility it's one thing to be socially distant in the facility the best you can and use best practices. But when you go home, when you go out to restaurants, when you're around your kids who maybe have been going back to school, you know, all of those things are all the other factors in this that are kind of piggybacking off of what May said that we can say, yeah, July 28th makes a lot of sense. You get there. But then we know that the time period on this thing can be up to two weeks, maybe even longer for some players. And that's where things can get really interesting. Well, starting on time, not a problem for a training camp. I feel that's a full go for the National Football League, as they've, as Mace pointed out, Ryan pointed out, they're sitting back. You're on the clock now, NFL. You're getting there here at the end of July when training camps are set to open. Finishing training camp, that's a different story. So we're going to see how things go, how they work at the facility. And think of the Broncos specifically with those multiple practice fields, you know, multiple locker rooms. They got a locker room in the Pat Bowling Fieldhouse. So, uh, you know, they'd be able to distance offense versus defense, stuff like that. So I believe the NFL will start on time and then we are in a wait and see type of mode in terms of can they finish training camp? Can they finish preseason and start the regular season on time? Ryan, you kind of alluded to players, you know, following COVID-19 protocol, but really other than giving up their weekly pay, players won't face any penalties if they choose to actually opt out of the entire 2020 season. I mean, we've seen it in other leagues, players deciding that the money isn't worth the risk. Do you guys think that this is something that we might see in the NFL and maybe specifically here in Denver? Definitely. I mean, that, that seems to be the case. I mean, you're talking about guys that have high risk, not only for themselves, we have asthma, you have all sorts of guys that have breathing issues, but then their families, uh, you have, uh, you know, men that have pregnant wives or wives that just gave birth. And, and th these are, these are factors that none of us can really right now know for sure how the player is going to feel. They're going to get all the information, which is what the NFLPA has been doing, sharing all the information with the players, letting them get in position to make some decisions. But absolutely. Now, is this going to be uh, systemic? I, I don't really know. I, I sort of doubt it because of the way the NFL is sort of structured. I don't think this is going to be all of a sudden where we're going to see mass amount of players jumping ship, if you will, and opting out. But I do think you're going to see a few names pop up throughout this process. And you know, all, all it takes is a, is a couple of, you know, name players, not say star, but name players to really give some mo momentum to that. Yeah, Ryan hits the nail on the head here because it's really all about your personal freedoms and your personal decisions. And I'm going to take no issue with any player that says, 
I don't feel comfortable playing, especially if you have a compromised immune system. We often think of these football players as like the ultimate manly men, the ultimate alpha males. Yeah, it's true, but some of them have had major health concerns. I think of my best friend, Eric Hoffman, who had chemotherapy and had a bout with cancer. He's got a compromised immune system and, you know, is all masked up and staying safe at work and all those sorts of things. Look at James Conner. He had to go through cancer treatment, right? Maybe that compromised immune system will cause him to have pause when it comes to playing during a coronavirus pandemic. So, you know, it, it's going to be everyone's personal choice. And I imagine there will be some players who choose not to play. Yeah, I think an interesting thing for those players who do opt out is what happens with their contracts. And we see in Major League Baseball that players can opt out. Effectively, this year just goes by the wayside. So if you're in the second year of your contract and you opt out of this year, you become a free agent in 2021. How does the league handle that part? And this is part of why the negotiations between the NFL and NFLPA they end up taking a while because they, they have to decide, okay, if you opt out, does – this year on your contract just basically go by the wayside and you can continue advancing forward? Or do you put a pause on that player's contract and say, all right, you've got a three-year deal. You're going into year two. You opt out. You're going to be in year two next year on the same terms. These are part of the details that they've got to iron out before they can have everything out there in writing and set for everything to move forward. As we continue this long list of hypothetical situations that we may see, you guys, Adam Schefter reported late last week that he had multiple sources in this league tell him that training camp will not feature that usual 90-man roster, that it will probably be somewhere between 75 and 80 players that we can really expect out there. Who do you guys think will be affected most by this decision? Undrafted players. I think uh, the, those are the guys that um, they need that camp. They, need, they needed OTAs. They didn't get that. And, it's, and it, it, we saw back in 2011 when there, was no, there were no OTAs because of the lockout, it was possible for undrafted guys to still make an impact. Chris Harris Jr. did that so well back in 2011. But uh, you need those reps. And if rosters are limited and if camp does involve a few weeks of building up in terms of conditioning, guys working in separate groups before bringing the whole team together, and then having fewer preseason games, all that is opportunities lost. Now, the interesting thing is the idea of an expanded practice squad still being kicked around. So it's possible you could come to camp with fewer players than usual, but those players could have a much better chance to make the team because in some form or fashion because you might have an expanded roster. Say you've got a 20-man practice squad instead of 12 players. Well, the, that's the window to keep eight guys that uh, maybe you didn't get a longer look at, long look at in the preseason in camp, but you would get a long look at in practice over the course of the year. Yeah, I mean, 100% with Mace there. I mean, that, that's the thing is we've already seen those guys impacted by lack of reps and OTAs. You know, that, that's where guys kind of build a little bit of that trust with the coaching staff and they can build some momentum into training camp. And unfortunately, those guys didn't get that time. Now they're even faced with a cut down before even training camp starts. Uh, that's going to be a bit of a problem for some of those players.